All right, all right. Good evening, my fellow beauty and barber professionals. I am Tamara Johnson Sheely, and I am coming to you L I V E right here on social media, right here on Facebook. Um, wanting to get on here and have a conversation. We're actually not just uh, live here on social media. We actually have a conference call um, in the background. So you'll get an opportunity to hear from other professionals, not just me, um, as we discuss and start to sort through regaining control of our industry. Um, I just want to introduce myself real briefly um, and bring you up to speed on uh, where we are as an organization and what we're doing, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, and how important it is that we as beauty and barber professionals are engaged politically. I don't know, and I know, you know, politics is such an ugly word, particularly in our salons and in our barber shops. Politics is not something that um, those of us we, that we tend to discuss, um, but we definitely have to discuss it amongst ourselves, if nothing else. Um, politically, our industry is seeing its demise. And, you know, we've been sounding the alarm as an organization. I am the senior advocate of politics, beauty, and barber. I am the president of the Concern Beauty and Barber Professionals. And we cannot just sit back, not in this day and age, and let our industry literally come to its demise. So um, I wanted to talk about three different, three. I wanted to make three points tonight before I um, let those that are on the conference call chime in. Um, we have a responsibility to this industry. For those of us that are um, have been doing this, I was actually an 18 year professional myself, providing services and went from providing service to literally advocating on behalf of the beauty and barber industry. I just couldn't sit back any longer and watch this industry take a, take a dive. And I felt it in my pocket. I saw it happen with other professionals. And the biggest indicator for me that something was happening is when I came into this industry, I watched stylists. And I actually see one of the stylists on here who can attest to this. I worked in a salon with Hey Howard, Howard Baker. And I can, he can attest to this, that there was six-figure stylists all around us. And to see the industry now where beauty and barber professionals take second jobs or have to depend on other streams of income when this was a, an industry that was so viable that many of us were able to feed our families and live very, very good lifestyles off the beauty and barber industry. But we're not there anymore. Um, and those of us that are veterans in this industry, we know. We know where this industry was. And these newcomers, they see it, but they don't know what we know. So we definitely have to bring them on board and, and, and help them to see where this industry is and hold them accountable as well. So regaining control of our industry to, to, to our organization is, is three parts to this. And I actually started some Facebook posts and I wanted to get the conversation going back in the end of June. Um, okay, I have some people on, uh, on my conference call. If you're watching it live, mute your phone because it's, we're getting some feedback. So if you're watching this live as well as listening, mute your phone. I, I, I can hear you. <laughs> Somebody mute your phone. Mute your phone. We're getting feedback. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, whoever that was. Um, and I'm going to let those on the on the conference call introduce themselves in just a few minutes so that we can definitely start this this dialogue. But again, um, we started this conversation actually at Premier Beauty and then I brought it to social media because I wanted to really uh, help beauty and barber professionals Hi, to see. Hey. Thank you for joining the conference call. We are actually on Facebook Live as well. So stay tuned. Um, mute your phone if you have any background noise. Um, so regaining control of our industry is, is three points we want to make, is that we as beauty and barber professionals have a, prof we're, we're professionally accountable uh, to this industry. Um, not just, you know, you know we, we do this day in and day out. So we have, a, we, we should definitely be intentional. I see somebody trying to chime in, but I, uh, we definitely uh, should be intentional about being professionally accountable to this industry. That means that we are accountable to our brothers and sisters, our fellow barber and beauty professionals. We're accountable to each other because what you do and what I do and what we all do is a reflection on the entirety of this industry. So we wanna make sure that as beauty and barber professionals, we are holding ourselves accountable to, to those around us. 
Thank you for joining the call. They're coming in, y'all. We, we actually have a conference call on the back end. I'm going to let the those those that have joined the conference call, I'm going to let them introduce themselves in just a few minutes. Um, so again, professional accountability. That means we're accountable to each other as beauty and barber professionals. What affects me affects you, affects us, affects all of us. The second point that I want to make tonight is about social responsibility. Um, we have a social responsibility in the beauty and barber industry, and that social responsibility is to the clients we serve in the communities around us. Um, we don't just provide these services that make people look beautiful, which we do very well. Um, we also have to be intentional about giving back to the communities that are feeding us and supporting us. So when there's initiatives and we see things that are happening in our communities or happening with our clients, we have a social responsibility to be engaged. And that means um, things such as back to school drives, um, blood drives. Um, I see I, there's a salon or barbershop up in New York that, does, that takes, takes do blood pressure screenings. There are things that we could do. We have a barber who's a, who's a gardener. Um, there's things that we can do that, 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 you know, to give back to those around us and give back to the communities and the people that are uh, making sure that we have food on our tables. So we have a social responsibility in the beauty and barber industry. Um, the third point I want to make is a, is a moral obligation. And when I say moral obligation, that means that that means in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit, I have an obligation to this industry. Um, I'll, I'll give you my story. Personally, I was a single mom uh, uh, of two sons um, and providing, and, and I was a nail tech for 18 years. And nails fed me and my children. Nails provided us with a very decent lifestyle. Um, nails gave me the flexibility I needed to, you know, when my children had, had, had events at their schools, I was always there. They can tell you I didn't miss a beat. I was always there. I was always yeah. present. And I owe this back to the industry. The industry gave me an opportunity to be the mother that I wanted to be to my children. It gave me an opportunity to provide for them. Um, and I did very well as a nail tech. Now, today, I know some of our nail techs will tell you that things are not the same. But this industry worked for me. And now my son is in barber school. He is second generation beauty and barber. I have a moral obligation to give something back and to make sure this industry is here for generations to come. So when we're talking about regaining control of our industry, we have to talk about our professional accountability to this industry. We have to talk about the social responsibility to this industry. And we have to talk about the moral obligation to this industry. And as an organization, we started our efforts in 2011. Um, we started watching this industry politically because we realized that what was happening was not necessarily us behind the chairs, those of us that were providing services. There was some sort of outside force, something that was happening that we needed to address um, this industry. So we started watching it politically, going to board meetings and watching policy. And I can tell you, uh, we really honed in on legislation in 2015. And in 2015, we tracked 308 bills in the beauty and barber industry that were introduced across this nation that affected our industry. In 2016, we tracked 343 bills that affected this industry across the nation. In 2017, we tracked 409 bills. In 2018, 229 of those bills rolled over. So that means they rolled over into the 2018 uh, General Assemblies across this nation. So 229 of those bills rolled over. We're now trying to compile to see how many bills we have actually tracked thus far in 2018. And we are over 400 bills. We're, we still got to comb through to make sure they're all specific. But at this point in our database, we have over 400 bills. I'm going to let that sink in because the, the magnitude of the attack on this industry politically, this is our livelihood. For those of you that are standing behind the chairs, that are owning salons, that are distributing products, this is your livelihood. This is your money. And there's a direct attack politically on this industry. And I know a lot of times people don't believe in politicians. They don't believe in the political system. But I'll just tell you, in 2014... 
I put myself out there in a major way and I ran for the state senate. You can look behind me, you'll see a picture up here on the wall where I ran for the Georgia State Senate. I ran in 2014, I garnered 37% as a candidate, and I ran because I wanted to see change in my industry and I understood that getting inside of the political process would be an opportunity for beauty and barber professionals to be engaged politically in a way that we had never been engaged before. We've never had a beauty or barber professional elected to a state legislature. So if we can get somebody from this industry elected in any state, they will be the first. So I don't want anybody to, to think that we can't do some great things because we can. So in 2014, I ran um, and ran against uh, a, a sitting incumbent, garnered 37 percent as a no name candidate and with no money. Lord have mercy. Decided to run again. I ran again in 2016, garnered 43.8 percent again. Barely known, but met, known more than the first time and got closer than I did, 43.8%. Still did not win. Put myself out there again this year in 2018 and ran for the third time and I did not win my primary election this time. And this is where I saw politics from a whole nother perspective. That Democrats and Republicans, I ran as a Democrat. Democrats and Republicans, when you get that, that entrenched politically, when you get that far up the food chain politically, somebody made a comment today on social media that Democrats and Republicans all serve the same people. And guess what? That person was right. So whoever made that comment today on social media about Democrats and Republicans being the same people, serving the same people, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And this is about the haves and the have-nots. This is about, um, um, you know, politics is a game of those that are wealthy, wealthy, wealthy that own this country and those of us that go to work every day and try to provide for our families, it's, that's the divide. And we, they make it racial. Race is smoke and mirrors. And I can tell you in the beauty and barber industry, race should not matter because you, we are fellow brothers and sisters in this industry and I don't care what, whatever ethnicity you are, we're all in the same game when it comes to the beauty and barber industry. We're all in the same game. This is our industry. This is our license. This is our livelihood. This is how we feed our families. This is how we, we're going to retire, some of us. This is how we're going to live our lives. And we can't allow the political realm to influence us to the extent that we lose control. So regaining control of our industry is about us being intentional about getting, getting involved politically. And I know that's like, you know, and I've, we've been doing this now since 2011 as an organization. And I can tell you that there's a learning curve. You know, some of us don't know what legislation is. Some of us don't know how bills are introduced. Some of us don't know who our local elected officials are. We don't know who our state senator is. We don't know who our council person is, our school board person. We don't know a lot of who these people are. And it's okay. Because that's what our organization is all about. Politics, Beauty and Barber is about taking you by the hand, Beauty and Barber professionals. And we all walking and, and walking through this process together. There is a learning curve. Trust me, you'll figure it out. We'll work it out. We'll get through it. And when we do, we are mighty. We are mighty in number numbers. We are mighty in power. People have power. I can promise you one thing, and one thing I can tell you that I learned politically when, I, when I've run these three times, is that I don't care how much money, they can, these politicians can, can have all the money in the world thrown at them, given to them. The only thing, and when I, mean, I say it, I mean it, the only thing that they are afraid of is your power to vote them in and your power to vote them out. Let me say that again. The only thing that they are afraid of is your power to vote them in and your power to vote them out. So when I tell you that we collectively can turn our industry around, I get encouraged, I get excited because I know how we can win. This organization, we know how to win. We know how to galvanize, organize. We, we understand strategy. We understand policy. We read legislation. And we teach you how to do the exact same thing. So guess what? 
when you show up to a city council meeting or when you show up to the Capitol in your state, when you show up to the board meetings, guess what? You have their undivided attention. You know why? Because you're not there as a novice. You're there because you know what you're doing. You know what you're saying. You know what you're talking about. And you got the proof to, to prove it. So this is where Politics, Beauty, and Barber empowers you. We encourage you. We empower you. We arm you. And you come into this thing like, a, like warriors. We come into this thing like an army. And when I say we can turn this industry around, we can turn this industry around. I, I, I get a little um, frustrated because so many of us are caught up in the celebrityism. I actually mentioned that in a post earlier today. So many of us are caught up in the celebrityism and we put our celebrity status over the status of this industry or our edu the fact that we're educating in this industry. I said to someone on a, on a, a post earlier that we have some of the most uneducated, unprofessional people in this industry. And yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for those that just want to make money. There's a whole lot of opportunity for those that just want to make money because there's a bunch of people in this industry that don't know Shit, let me just say it. But those of us that are in this industry because we care about this, this industry, we love what we do, we take pride in what we do, we're not in this industry for the glitz and the glamour. We're in this industry because we want to see, you know, we, we, we want to do this thing right. So our intentions with Politics, Beauty, and Barber and the Concerned Beauty and Barber Professionals is two things. Let me tell you who we are, and then I'm going to let those that are on the call jump in. We have a couple people that are members um, that I believe that are on the call. I want them to jump in and then chime in and give you some stories to why they even joined us and why they're a part of this. Who we are, we're the Concerned Beauty and Barber Professionals, and we are Politics, Beauty, and Barber. Thank you for joining the call, Ramon. I'm going to let you jump in in just a few minutes. So who we are as, as the Concerned Beauty and Barber Professionals and Politics Beauty and Barber, we are a two-in-one organization because what you cannot have is legislation without education. Let me say that again. What you cannot have is legislation without education. What you cannot have is a viable industry. What you cannot be is a professional. You cannot be a professional. You are not a professional if you do not have education behind you. Not just your foundational education, continuing education. Continuing education and the foundational education are pivotal to who we are as beauty and barber professionals. So we have this, this, this FBI FBIC, whoever they are with the Professional Beauty Association, go back and tell them I'm talking about them. Please, those of you that are trolling this page, that are not on the side of what's right for beauty and barber professionals, please let them know I'm talking about them. So the Professional Beauty Association and along, along with some of their allies have gotten together and said that we uh, have to have less hours to be beauty and barber professionals. In this industry, uh, our, our, our foundational education, beauty and barber schools, we need less hours, and that equates to professionalism. They're going to roll back the hours in our industry for foundational education where you, get the, where you need it the most because you should not touch a client if you're not as prepared as we can be. So they want to roll back the uh, – they want to roll back our, our educational hey, standards. Nate, I'm going to let you jump in, sir, in just a few minutes. Y'all, we got some heavy hitters that have joined us on this conference call. I'm super excited. Share this post. If you are watching this live on Facebook, share, share, share. We got a lot of people watching. I'm super excited. Um, but, yeah, we have people that are rolling back our educational standards and, and calling us professionals because that we are not if we don't have education and we don't have foundational education, adequate foundational education. So we have this agenda and it's, and, it's, and it's smoke and mirrors, y'all, because some of y'all are getting caught up in these hair shows, which is nothing wrong with going to the hair shows and having a great time and seeing your fellow beauty and barber professionals. But when you're so caught up in that, that you can you, you believe anything somebody tell you that it's OK to roll back our hours. Anybody that wants to take this industry backwards is not a friend of our industry. Let me say that again. If you're rolling back the hours on this industry and, and, and you're not a friend to our industry and we're coming for you. So beauty and barber professionals, continuing education and foundational education is our key. We have to have credentialing. There's no industry, your doctors, your lawyers, your attorneys, no teachers. All of these profession, professions have credentials. And for us to say, oh, we don't need education, how, how dare anybody and how dare we as beauty and barber professionals think that's okay? 
So those of you that uh, believe that's okay, get off this feed right now. Get off this page right now because I'm talking about you and we're and we're I'm, we're not taking it anymore. We're, we're not. I'm 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 kind of on fire tonight because I've watched this industry for. I, I, this is my this is my heart. This is a lot of our, this is our heartbeat. So who we are as beauty and barber professionals, we're not gonna just sit back and let this industry continue to die. Um. So. Let me give you uh, more about who we are. Like I said, we're a two-in-one organization, politics and, and education. So the Concerned Beauty Professionals, we are continuing education. We host a conference call every second and fourth Monday. Every second and fourth Monday, we're on a conference call. We're getting continual education. We have a federal alliance with OSHA. And, and Georgia Tech, we have uh, partnerships with the University of Minnesota, we have the Boston B Department of Health that we get great information from, Women's Voices for the Earth. We have a lot of great allies, numerous allies that, that feed us documented scientific information. Continuing education should be about continual learning. We're not learning what we learned in school. We're on a whole nother level of, with our learning. So these conference calls are pivotal to your success. Because your education equi equ equates to the money in your pocket. So let me say that again. Your education equates to the money in your pocket. All right? So that's who we are as the, for the, as the Concerned Beauty Professionals. Politics Beauty is the legislative arm. We know how to fight. And we're fighting politics, these politicians, these, this policy that is, that is turning our industry back. We're fighting it. We're tracking it. We're monitoring it monitoring it every day. Every day we monitor legislation. If something happens in any state across this nation, we can tell you where it happened, what happened, and, and what's going on, and what we need to do. We're always on watch. We're always on guard. And that's what we have to be as beauty and barber professionals, because politics, trust me, they're sneaky. They're doing things behind closed doors. They're making deals. But when things happen politically, and it, and it affects bills, and it affects our industry, we are on point. We're watching it. We see it. We're serious about it. So we have to stay on guard. Um, like I say, every second and fourth Monday, we're having these conference calls with edu continuing education and updating you on the particulars of your state so that you can stay on guard about what's happening. Um, I'm going to let some people jump in. I, we got a bunch of heavy hitters on the line. I'm going to start with those that I know that are on the call. Uh, let you say hi. Tell us what state you're calling from. We're going to start with Crystal. You there still? I'm here. Hi, Crystal. Welcome. What state are you? And tell us what you do. I, I am in Johnson City, Tennessee. I am a medical nail technician and a certified clinical podiatric medical assistant. And I'm also the owner of Safe Pro, where we supply safety and sanitation equipment to salons, along with continuing education. And through... Medi Nail Learning Center, which I'm also an advisory board member. We are trying so hard to do these very same things with you. Tamara, you know we're trying to work together on so many different things. This is just so important for our industry that we get together and make some serious changes. I can't, I'm, I'm wanting to scream that they're wanting to lower our requirements. In Tennessee, we only are required 600 hours for our nail program. Mm -hmm. and and most of that, granted, is, is hands-on time, but we need more time on safety and sanitation and health concerns. And our testing needs to be updated. Yeah. And Tennessee um, actually just had some natural hair legislation where they were going to deregulate the natural hair industry. So there's a lot going on in Tennessee. Crystal, thank you for joining this conference call. We have Allison Springer. Are you there, Allison? Allison, hi, I'm here. Tell us uh, what state Sorry. you're calling. Tell us what state you're calling from, and tell us what you do. Hi, I'm Allison Springer. I'm from New York. Um, well, I'm the president of the Natural Hair Care Product Line, Mystique Natural. I actually go to salons and teach them how to transition their customers from a relaxer to a natural state, and what products to use, and how to um, earn additional cash through. Not just my products, but um, any of the products that will help them. Because a lot of salons, as we know, they don't upsell. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is get us in the mindset of you can only be behind a chair so many hours. 
And in order to start achieving those higher numbers, you have to sell to your customers. Most of the time, people have um, a preconceived notion that their customers are already spending enough money, so they don't want to burden them with adding additional costs. But 78% of the people leave your salon and then they go to the Koreans and buy something else. And I'm like, you might as well recirculate that money into your pocket and in the community as well as help them to maintain their hair and um, have it long and lustrous and not give it to other people who's not going to spend the money back in our communities. And, and one thing about products, too, um, we, we can definitely, that, that's, that's legislation. A lot of times, um, these ingredients and things that are happening with these products, that is mandated through legislation, and we need to make sure that we, we address that as well. So thank you, Allison, for joining the call. Um, um, Avion, are you with us? Ms. Reagan? Yes, I am. Hi. Tell us what state and tell us what you do. Um, I am from New Jersey. And my name is Avian Regan, and um, I am the owner of Mainstream Beauty Bar, and that's in West Orange, New Jersey. And basically, I'm pretty new to this, but finding out what's going on with the deregulation has sparked a fire for me. Yes. Uh, I've worked in corporate for over 13 years. Prior to getting my license, I've been licensed for about seven years, and I was a union steward, so, um, and I work closely with the chief stewards and the executive boards of the unions, and I know a lot about bargaining and things, so this was really, you know, close to my heart. And when it started, I just, well, when I found out about it, which is a little too late because there's this hair braided bill, it's on our governor's desk, uh, currently waiting to be signed, so we're... Uh, making those calls and trying to rally the folks to get them to um, call in just to let them know to, uh, you know, oppose this law and this, and, and this bill in its current stand. Yeah. And this is where organizing, and I'm glad you said that, um, Avion, because organizing is so important. Because with, if you're not organizing, when these bills come down the pipeline, they'll get right past you. So as she says, that bill is sitting on the governor's desk. So it's just a pin stroke away from being a law. And not that these things can't be reversed, but then we have to go through this whole process. But organizing is so important. So Avion, I'm glad to have you on the on the broadcast and on the conference call. Kevin Jackson, are you with us? Thank you. I'm glad to be there. Thank you. Kevin, are you with us? Yes, I am. All right. Introduce yourself and tell us what state. My name is Kevin Jackson. I'm from Texas, the big, great state of Texas. And I am an owner of Genesis Master Barbers uh, for 16 years. And um, I am... Um, I've been in the in the industry for quite some time now, and over the years, I've seen a lot of changes happen um, at the state level. Um, and I am a part of, I am a member of the uh, professional beauty and barber uh, professionals concern professionals. I, I'm a member. I joined uh, probably about five or six months ago, and uh, <clears throat> everything that Tamara is uh, stating about the meetings and uh, the different uh, partnering uh, that uh, we're a part of is true. Uh, we have monthly meetings. Um, we, we go in-depth and talk about legislation and try to, uh, we learn from her and we, we, we figure out at our own state level, what we need to do as a professional uh, cosmetologist or barber, uh, whatever your profession is, we find out what we need to do uh, from headquarters to um, uh, go to, you know, to try to seek out and fight on the same level that Tamara is fighting on. Uh, so I, I, I'm new to the organization. Uh, like I said, I've been in there for five, about five months, and I'm learning a whole lot. So, and uh, I'm the president of Genera Hair uh, Products, um, probably about three years old, and it's a natural product, and it's a product that's good for natural hair. And 
all about just learning, 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 learning. Yeah. Uh, and that's what this like, industry is all about, yeah, Kevin. Where I can get my yep, um, instructor license. So. Um, that's what this industry is all about, Kevin. It's about taking it to the next level and learning and building on, you know, the, the, the level that you're on. So thank you for being a part of our organization. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for um, being um, intentional about what's happening in Texas and following legislation to the extent that you're doing your research, you're doing your homework, you're holding these public officials and these, uh, these legislators accountable to what happens to the beauty and barber industry. So thank you for being the epitome of what true professionalism is, Kevin. Thank you. Um, Denise Jarrett out in California, are you with us? Um, yes, I'm here. Say hi and tell um, us what I'm state and what you Jarrett. do. Okay, hi. I'm Denise Jarrett. Um, I'm in California currently. Um, I'm the founder of Her Eco Herb Braiders Association. Um, I started in Minnesota with the uh, herb braiders regulations and laws there. Um, this year we fought a bill that sat on the governor's uh, desk that the governor didn't sign because it was policy. So we uh, missed that one. We're fighting to increase the education and the right to uh, the genocide of the needle being used in the hair for um, sew in needles with people hair, um, and that it could cause HIV, HPV, or herpes. So we wrote in on legislation for that this year. Now, currently, I'm working with someone out here in California because um, the cannabis laws um, incorporated um, natural products, um, herbs, and things like that. So it was a lot of products was wiped off the um, market this July. So we're watching that bill and working with that. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Denise. If, if you're on the conference call and you have um, some background noise, please mute your phone. Um, this is live on social media, so we want to make sure we get as, the, the best feed that we can get uh, with, with background noise. So we want to please mute your phones. Um, Drina Torres, you with us? Drina, are you with us out in California? Okay, who else is on the line? Uh, I'm going to let you guys kind of just tell me who you are because those are the names that I have. Who else is on the line? Kenneth Martin, South Carolina. Kenneth Martin, North, Car North Carolina or South Carolina? South Carolina. South Carolina, South Kakalaki. I'm, we're here in Georgia. <laughs> tell, us, uh, tell us what you do, Kenneth. Uh, I am um, a master barber. I just graduated from school not too long ago, but I've been cutting hair longer than that for over 30 years. Um, and my wife and I, we are we are the owners of Philly Profile Cuts, and we are the owners of Philly Cuts Natural Hair Products. Um, and we just decided to start joining in with you. Thank you for inviting us. Um, to go and hear about the politics in reference to the beauty and barber industry. Because South Carolina is very far behind the times. Uh, we have no, no true associations out here, with, with, which we are trying to start up now. My wife and I, we are, yeah, she's here also. We're, we are out here trying to start up as much as we, we can to go and get people interested in, in the truth about and the truth about our industry which is being taken away from us from from every aspect and I'm just learning now about the politics of it which I tried not to get involved in but I've been listening to you quite a bit now and I'm saying it's very important yeah. um, and and listening to everyone else talk about what's going on and the legislations uh, it's pretty hard out here and all the help that uh, we can give we would uh, greatly appreciate and, and listening and learning because as much as South Carolina has, we don't have nothing here to go and bring this into the times, and this is something that we're fighting for now. Yeah, yeah. And that, and your problem is not new, uniquely yours, um, Kenneth. Your problem is not just yours. Every state, 
they're they're all over the place with policy, with legislation, with the way things are, um, are, are, are unfolding for our industry as a whole. We're, they're all over the place. There's so much confusion. But those of us that are true professionals and those of us that, you know, we are the ones that should dictate the, the fate of this industry. We as beauty and barber professionals, we are the ones that should dictate what this industry should look like and where it goes in the future. Those of us that are in the trenches, this is our industry. So definitely, Kenneth, I'm going to give you guys the website in just a few minutes. Um, who else is on the line joining the call? Who else? Hi, this is Ramona from Las Vegas. Hey, Ramona from Las Vegas. How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm um, doing great. How are you? Good. Tell us. Um, you were actually Ramona was one of is one of our veteran members. She um, has has been a part of this 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 movement for a very long time. Tell us, Ramona, why you actually joined and what this industry means. What this mean what this movement means to you? Well, first of all, I started noticing I've been um, licensed licensed as a professional for 33 years and been mm -hmm. in the system for 29. And I carried a license in two states, in Michigan as a licensed instructor and COD and as a barber and a barber instructor. And as time went on, I've seen a big paradigm shift in this profession where we have to start working close together on education because mm -hmm. we are losing slowly but surely. And with these legislators are changing so many laws just as quick as we blink our eyes. And if we don't get together and start forming teams or however we want to do it, our industry going to drown. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, it's gonna exactly, and you see it as an educator. You see so many people coming into this industry not taking it seriously, and and then you know nothing we can do. We just you know we're just our industry is just going by the wayside. It's diluted and polluted. Those are the words we like to use to, to use to describe the where this industry is. It's diluted. It's got too many people. It's saturated. That means that we got a, 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 a on sort on just just people just on top of people in this industry. And not that we don't want to, we, we're trying to stop people from coming into this industry, but those that come in need to take it seriously and there needs to be standards, not just a free for all. And that's what we have now, now diluted and polluted. So thank you, Ramona, for all you're doing out in, in Nevada and in Michigan to make sure that you 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 represent this industry well. We, we absolutely appreciate you. Um, who else is on the line? Nate Raglan, I'm gonna bring you in last because I, I, I'm sure you got a lot to say. Uh, who else is on the line? Oh, okay. Well, let's bring you in. Nate, are you still with us? Mr. Ragman, Nate Raglan. He may have gone away, y'all, but I wanted to bring him in because he's a veteran of this industry. Well, probably 40 years plus, I, I would some large number he did extremely well uh back in the in the day when beauty was beauty was a true business so i was hopeful that he would come in and and, and bring us bring us all home but share this video guys our website and be a part of what we're doing let me let me invite you because you know what beauty and bar professionals we can spend money on some fancy dinners fancy clothes you know we can spend money on all the things but if, if we don't spend money on what's feeding us we're not going to have anything we're not going to have an industry. So we're going to invite you to be a part of what we're doing. Our website is politicsbeautybarber.org. Again, politicsbeautybarber.org. You can click on that and click on join, and it'll take you to the Concerned Beauty Professionals website so that you can see how we're all encompassing. We're education and legislation every second and fourth Monday. We have these conference calls. Join us. Be a part of what we're doing. Get on board and learn. Learn about what it takes for us to win and win our industry back and change the state and the fate of this industry. So again, our website is Politics Beauty Barber. You can click on politicsbeauty.org. It'll take you there, but also Politics Beauty Barber. Dot org and, and join us. Be a part of what we're doing. For those of you that are watching tonight, I know you're professionals for the most part, most of you. But if you go to the website, we have a, we have something just, just for you right here, right now. Go to the website when you click on join and it takes you to the Concerned Beauty Professionals website where you can join. Join both organizations. We're two in one. So you're getting two organizations for one. 
you join as a student for six months. I know you're not students, but go ahead and join as a student for six months just to get a feel for who we are, what we're doing, how we're doing it. And then after your six months, you can you can join then. Hopefully you'll you'll have enough ammunition where we can take this thing to the next level. Join as a student. We definitely won't treat you as such. You'll have a professional membership, but join as a student. It's half the price. It'll give you an opportunity to get in, learn what you need to learn, and let's take this industry back. There is so much that this industry is capable of, but we have to be organized to do it. That means we have to be intentional about working together. We got to get past our egos. That was something somebody else said earlier, that all these egos... We have to get past our egos, leave your ego on the shelf, leave your ego at home because what we're going to teach you, you don't already know. So leave your ego at home and just know that everything we're going to pour into you, literally pour into you, is going to take our industry to the next level. So be a part of what we're doing. Again, politicsbeautybarber.org. Join us. Be a part of what we're doing. We're on to changing the state and the fate of this industry. I want to thank all of you that participated in this conference call tonight. I do believe I'm going to do this again really, really soon. But get on board. We are we're moving forward, and there there is a, a definitely a, a learning curve. Um, so we got to catch up. There's a lot you need to learn in a short amount of time. And we're having these conference calls every second and fourth Monday. Every second and fourth Monday right uh, 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 at 11 o'clock a.m. So every second and fourth Monday, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So early on, on Monday mornings, but we get it done, we get it in, and we're going to take